Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. Not all of us can afford to be romantic. I've been offered a comfortable home and protection. There's a lot to be thankful for. Charlotte. I'm 27 years old. I've no money and no prospects. I'm already a burden to my parents. Oh, my. Look at your face. You're so old. Put on something sexy, get your ass out to Connecticut, and fix that young man's plumbing. What are you saying? I should get married to someone right away in case he's about to die? At least you could say you were married. See, I'm actually 76 today. Uh, it's getting up there, but uh, it's not quite that number. That, uh, it seems to be everywhere here. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Briny and even though I love makeup, I definitely don't get it even. So you don't need to leave the comments because I'm quite aware that I'm... We're all learning here. I'm definitely still learning. Just I'm the one that's putting my face out there and embarrassing myself, but whatever. I still kind of like the way this turned out, so I don't care. Last week's video was quite big and scary and kind of triggering. So we're doing something a little bit fluffier this week and looking at a particular study that I really wanted to have a look at about life stages and when you should be achieving things in life and all of the stickers around it and all of the issues around it basically. So this video is definitely like agony aunt-esque and funny. However, I do just want to say we are on about fertility issues and I know that that can be a really really sensitive topic for people. Um, so if that is too much for you this week then that's totally fine because I don't want to have anybody get hurt by my videos ever and next week I'll be doing my Final Fantasy 9 video because I just finished it yesterday and I was crying so I cried twice yesterday. Oh my goodness, what a wet blanket. Obviously as people who menstruate we always get told that our life is at its peak before the age of 25, right? That's definitely someone who lets us know that anyway. Otherwise you get told your eggs are shriveling up, that you age really quickly, blah blah blah, sexism, misogyny, medical sexism too is definitely in there. This close to falling off the deep end. <laughs> I know I'm smiling right now, but the light inside me is dying. Uh. Basically, we have a sell by date and then once you reach the age of 40, poof, the invisibility blanket is on and you're just gone. You're just nothing. Nobody cares about you anymore. Imagine how tired we are. Imagine how tired we are of it. The reason I wanted to get into this is because I'm watching Grace and Frankie because I'm going to be working on my Jane Fonda video very soon. I've mentioned maybe here in the past, I think so, maybe I cut it out of the videos, um, that I was always very fixated on marriage, on hitting particular milestones by particular times because very, very scared of the future and not being able to meet expectations and stuff all up in this messy little mind up here. Except for having children because I can't have them, I didn't want them, Brandon didn't want them, but like we've been together for nine years, we'll have been together for ten years next year. But also we had that discussion around children about a month into our relationship. We do not have time for this! I do not have time for you! Because we just knew so everything was just out on the table straight away, what we want in life, all of that other stuff, and he was like, I don't want kids, and I'm like, great, I can't have kids. Hey, honest conversations earlier in relationships are good, I'm just putting it out there. Let's have a little bit of a chat about these milestones and the many issues around them. And I'm gonna be 40! <laughs> when? <laughs> Someday! In eight years. But it's there! It's just sitting there like this big dead end! Let's get started with arbitrary milestones. The celebratory ages are roughly as follows. 1, 5, 10, 16. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy 18, 21, 30, but then you dread being 30. dread being 40 even more and then you have to wait until you're 50 in which case you're hanging your head in shame already after all of that you get to look forward to the gold card that awaits you when you get to retire at the age of 65. Most of my audience are around about my age or a bit below and so we're gonna be probably retiring maybe in our 70s at some point maybe if we can ever retire because we're gonna have to pay for it all ourselves aren't we? Oh we're so lucky oh my gosh. Dealing with the climate crisis and get into pay for the hell hole. Ugh, love it. So basically, that's it. And did you notice how many of them actually fall below the age of 30? 
glorious, isn't it? So of course, as I do, I like to look up studies for things. So I had a look at some stats for America, and on average, women got married at the age of 20 in the 1950s, and 23 for men. In 2013, that actually rose to 27.9 for women, and 29.1 for men. Now you may be saying, oh, well that's just a sign of the times, things change, ah ah ah. However, in 1890, the average age for a woman getting married was actually 24.5 in 1890. We're not about 1990, 1890. So basically, suck on that to everybody that keeps on thinking that child brides are a very normal thing. It never actually was that common, okay? As much as people love, and I do mean love, to protect predators. And also, please do bear in mind the fact that people actually lived for shorter amounts of time in 1890 and they were still getting married in their middle 20s and so that just meant that overall they had less time together so that means that they actually got to enjoy all of that time together right even though they sadly passed away quite young back then but hey medical advances means that you get to spend more time with the one that you love that you obviously chose when you're age 20. oh wait a second maybe at the age of 20 when your brain isn't fully developed maybe you actually chose wrong <laughs> And then you didn't really want to get divorced because it was a frowned upon thing to do. And oh my goodness, now we know why there are so many boomer jokes about hating your spouse. We cracked the code. So there was actually this study done on 1,600 people, which is a very, very small, poor study in my books, especially when you're considering the fact that this is being taken to be representative of the entire United Kingdom, which is how many million people? 67 million people, so it's not even like a 10% or anything, but anyway. This study was conducted to see when the prime times were in life to do the key milestone things, and they asked people from the ages of 16 to 65, which in my books is pretty ages because honestly people live way beyond 65 and I would argue that they'd have way, way more life experience to be able to actually reflect on things properly, but hey, whatever, that's fine. I wasn't the one conducting the study that thought that 1600 people was enough to represent an entire population, but whatever. We're just going to have a little look at this anyway and maybe give it a bit of a roast because I'm, I'm feeling sassy today. So your first kiss is meant to be at the age of 15. Now, now in my hometown you have been absolutely shamed for that but you know everyone's lived experiences are different at the age of 19 you get your first full-time job because I mean like honestly with those fees screw studying and at the age of 22 you're meant to move out and live with friends and also buy your first car so that means in this wonderful utopia land you only need to buy a car at the age of 22 so you're able to get by with your full-time job because the public transport was that good. Unless you live in a big city of the world, I don't really think that this is actually possible. Even then, like living in a in the biggest city in Aotearoa, yeah, getting around on public transport, ooh. If you are gonna live with friends, I would still advise against it. Like, we lived with friends and it worked fine for us, however, it doesn't always work out that way. Do you really want to risk it? I wouldn't go saying that you should live with friends. I think that nice strangers work instead. At the age of 23, you're meant to go on your first holiday with a partner. Um, okay, we did actually do this one because Brenda and I were like together at that point. So I have to say, I've lived that dream. And at 24, you're meant to rent on your own. You're meant to rent your own place at 24. Um, in this economy, in any recent economy, actually, who's able to do that? At the age of 25, ding ding ding, your brain is now fully matured and also it's the perfect time to get engaged according to this live chat. So that means that the person that you're currently with, obviously with your brain that's only just reached maturity, absolutely knows that this is like it for the rest of your life. Get married now and um, yes. Let's put all the cards in. Nobody ever changes their mind afterwards. However, you do get to start saving some money with them because you're allowed to rent with them now. So, yay, you get to split the rent with one person now, again, in this economy. At the age of 27, you get married um, and you have to buy your first flat as well. Like, yes, absolutely, totally, totally doable, possible, yes. Um, everyone's been able to save up that deposit on your teeny tiny little earning job that you've had since the age of 19. At 28 you pop out your first child, but don't worry though, at the age of 30 you start earning an average wage, which means that up until this point you've been able to do all of this on minimum wage. Silly goose, didn't you know that? At 31 you have your second child, and you also buy a brand new car the year after that too. At the age of 34 you become a manager at work, 
which I'm sorry, okay. Do you know any managers that are under the age of 40? And I guess it also depends on what you count as being a manager, but I still see a lot of grey pale stale males in managerial positions. Definitely not 34 year olds. At 36 you buy your second home because obviously you're so loaded at this point because you've been earning like an average wage for like a few years at this point so obviously you can afford that along with two kids. Oh and you get to treat yourself because you get to go on two holidays a year and at the age of 37 you should start earning £40,000 a year which I'm, I'm not living in the UK so I've got no idea but apparently that's a really good salary i've got no idea um for context here in aotearoa um a good salary is one hundred twenty-one thousand dollars. but even then people are like mm, actually no you need to have one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year for it to be a good salary because to me forty thousand sounds like nothing um even though when you look at uh average salary that people are on it's definitely closer to that number as opposed to like the worth i know that i'll never be earning that much because as an executive assistant the salary band range hasn't actually changed since i entered the workforce at the age of 18 full time and i'm 32 now so <laughs> And then of course after that nothing happens until you reach 60 which is apparently when you should retire i repeat in this economy so those are the life stages that you're meant to be at according to the age um did you notice how many of them fell below the age of 30. <sighs> isn't it wonderful that your life just kind of grinds to a halt and you just become a working husk of a person until you get to retire. Now obviously it's not just reflected in this study, it's reflected in society, it's reflected in the media that we watch, it's reflected in movies, and books, and TV. I swear, when we're 28, if we've never married, we marry each other. It's also one of the reasons why I really enjoy watching Hallmark <laughs> movies, because um, at least they're over the age of 30 when they actually uproot their entire lives of course working in the big corporate world and then they go to a small town to open like the best hot chocolate shop or whatever like at least they're all over the age of 30. I've actually spoken in my legacy video about the fact that I struggle with a sense of foreshortened future which is basically where you can't actually see yourself getting older or hitting big life stages right so um, I've mentioned quite a few times I was very sick as a kid still deal with a lot of health issues now and so this the whole idea about like having to get married like was a really huge weight on my shoulders even as a teenager every hospital visit it made me really panic about things like and then as I found out I shouldn't really have kids I personally felt like an absolute failure because what man wants someone who menstruates uh, who can't have children like because the whole point is to actually spread the seed and whatever other rubbish right so I overly compensated for that in myself because I felt like a failure basically because of these societal expectations and which is awful honestly I shouldn't beat myself up or try to become this perfect whatever men want sort of person because I really did become that because I wanted to make up for the fact that I was lacking in like that key way which is ugh now I can only speak to my own personal experience even though I never had a maternal bone in my body I never wanted kids but as soon as that choice felt like it was being taken away from me I actually felt this sense of doom and um, obviously with my health issues so any, anyway I was just like well if I pass away I want to be able to have it that I was married on my tombstone because otherwise you failed as a woman. That's what I mean when I say I've had to do so much unlearning over my time which is why I'm making videos like this to hopefully help other people that may be as neurotic as me. But the pressure on people who menstruate to be thinking about children from literally their own childhood, how they could be good parents, of how they can do all of this stuff and then have it all, all of that toxic messaging is so strong, which again in my books, not a good thing because you have to plan your whole life around it basically. Because obviously your brain matures at the age of 25, you have until the age of 35 to have gotten all of this stuff done. So that gives you about 10 years. The reason that you have to have this decided by the time you're 35 is because that's when things get determined as being a geriatric pregnancy because, hey, we love the medical industry here. That's a wonderful term to use. I, I understand all of the complexities around it. It's just like, well, you don't really get treated as nicely, shall we say, if you're over the age of 35 and you're pregnant. Well, this really does point out the unevenness of my eyes, doesn't it? Obviously, you have to know about your career. You have to have met the right person by the age of 25 because, of course, you still need to be able to get married to them for it to be legitimate. 
this map and have all of the money for the wedding and also you really do need to have a place of your own so you need about half a million dollars for a deposit and also because you want to be able to pop the two or however many children you want to have out at that point and this is of course assuming that you actually want to go down the heteronormative path of having someone that you supposedly love with you um, begin this wonderful journey of life together where the responsibilities mostly fall on the person with the uterus. Oh, and also have picked a career and become successful enough in it that you'll be able to return to it when you get back um, from it and then be able to adapt to that life where you actually have two jobs but then get treated like you should only have one job and that's all by the age of 35 that you're meant to have got all this done and this is during the period of your life where you're meant to actually still be able to like discover things about yourself, learn about the world, all that other wonderful good stuff. That is a buttload of pressure to be putting on people at such a young age. Of course, as soon as you do have those children, you shift from being a whole person to then being a carer, not only to your spouse, but then also to the children, until you get nominated to go on a reality TV show to shame you into the fact that you haven't taken good enough care of yourself because you've been caring for them at the same time as having to work the whole time. And of course, therefore are invisible. It's not really fun, is it? The time of biological usefulness gets weaponized against us, which is not news to any feminist out there. I'm sure that you've heard all of this in different ways. It's also one of the reasons why I worry about youth being so pedestaled, in particular around getting married, because you'll never look as good as you do now. It's like, basically, it's all downhill from here. It's the same as like, it's, it kind of gives me the vibes of when people say that they peaked in high school, but like women peak before the age of 25. And I'm, I'm really just here like, oh my god, people, women live longer, we live until we're 80, <laughs> around about. And I hope that none of this is being misinterpreted because none of this is to shame people that get married young or have kids at any stage in life. I'm on specifically about the societal pressures to do things by certain time frames and a worth of women. And it making people feel like if they don't meet these expectations that they failed because I hate that, I don't think that's healthy. I want to marry him for your money. Fair. Oh, Lorelei. Don't you see? That's why we have to have his consent, silly. Well, at least we're getting down to brass tacks. You admit that all you're after is money. No, I don't. Aren't you funny? Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty. But my goodness, doesn't it help? Everything becomes a business, darling, including marriage. Commodification of women aside, because that is something I'll be talking about in my objectification video, when I'm emotionally able to actually handle that video, because it's going to be very hard for me to do. Have you heard of the common guide that you should be engaged two years into a relationship? Because otherwise, where is it going? What's the point of it? Because that was really hammered hard home into my head, at least. The fact that this is the standard timing because otherwise you're just wasting everybody's time. Now, I may be very unpopular here, but I fully understand why this mindset still exists and why I'm kind of on this side of it because as we just discussed in particular for people who menstruate your timeline of things to get done is that much more condensed and shorter and you have to get things done at a younger age because of all of the prejudice against you and because of all of the reasons I stated before and so people being in relationships that they're not actually wanting to be in I personally don't understand because I do see that as wasting everybody's time it's not about reaching end goals of marriage or kids or whatever, like that's up to each relationship, every single relationship is different. I'm on about like why be in a relationship that neither party is like fully fulfilled in and happy and you're not living your authentic lives together. And I love, I love, I love you. Well then. That, that I just spouted about my romantic notions on life can really be tossed aside because relationships of convenience pay. How marriages started after all, literally a business transaction to secure alliances, trade, land, <laughs> property. So who am I to tell people that they shouldn't be in a relationship of convenience when literally the institution of marriage was built upon this to begin with? <laughs> Especially in this day and age where renting property, let alone owning property by yourself is basically impossible. 
Our entire societal structures, at least for most people that are watching this video, is built around prioritizing and rewarding generational wealth, traditional family structures, and greed underneath this umbrella of white supremacy. It's not looking good. Why not form a coalition to be able to actually afford property because that is what I consider to be a basic human right? Do you think that banks want to give our money to friendship groups to co-own a home? No. The establishment of marriage is made thusly so that the contract stipulates that the bank will get their money no matter what happens to love. Love is not part of it. It comes down to a contractual agreement basically. And when it comes to friendships, that's messier because you haven't had to do all of the extra stuff that when you get married you have to do. That's basically what it's about. It's not really um, around the whole love concept that I like to go by. It really does come down to manipulation of power and meaning that there is no escape from paying the bills. <laughs> In a capitalist society, Obviously, everybody needs to make their way, be useful in some sort of way to be able to earn their keep because, hey, just being alive costs money. Um, but it's kind of always been that way even before capitalism became, like, the thing. Like, everyone always had to, like, forage and do all that sort of stuff. You would have thought that given all of our advances, we wouldn't want to leave people behind, but hey, greed's fun. We love it. But today, worth is placed on people in multiple ways, as discussed in my legacy video over here. However, only we should be able to deem for ourselves if we feel worthy. Um, ultimately, it shouldn't have to come down to all of like these weird, arbitrary reasons that people decide to come up with and put even more pressure in particular on people with uteruses to be able to actually feel worthy at all. And don't even get me started on the misinformation campaign of having it all because, oh my goodness, that is such a lie. Obviously, you can probably tell that I like to fight against this mindset because I don't really think that it's useful using the same guide stick to measure everybody by, especially a racist, sexist, ableist one. And also, ageist one. And people shouldn't be made to feel less than if they can't have children, if they don't want to have children, if they don't want to have a long-term monogamous relationship. Like, that sort of stuff is completely okay, but the, but the way that things are set up, it's set up in a way to cast judgment on people for not hitting particular milestones at a particular time in life. However, there are amazing people that have, like, completely revamped their life and changed everything past the age of 40, that's when their life really does begin in a way, like people like Jacqueline Wilson who always gets heralded as a great example of this. It shouldn't really matter if you've missed particular life stages, the main point is really to just live life, <laughs> at least in my books. Um, hopefully this has been entertaining, funny, heartfelt, some sort of thing. I hope that you've had a nice little cosy corner anyway with a good cup of tea. I thought of something a little different instead of a standard emoji that everybody can use. Um, in the 1950s, since people were getting married at the age of 20, um, think of yourself when you're at the age of 20. What emoji would you have? Because is there a emoji for being drunk and falling on the floor because that was me <laughs> at the age of 20. I definitely would have not made a sound decision when it comes to choosing someone to marry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing all of your answers down below. Um, but anyway, thank you lovelies so so much for watching. Once again, next week it's Final Fantasy 9 and then hopefully I'll be able to handle one of the big topics that I've been kind of putting off. <laughs> hopefully I'll be more emotionally able to handle that stuff. Okay, thanks lovelies, bye! <laughs> Every time that I'm filming, if you hear crunching, it's this. Every time.